Thank you, fellow babies, for joining us on today's Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. For our Patreon patrons, thank you so much. For our Amazon Prime members who have taken the effort to link their Twitch accounts, thank you so much. And for all the rest of you cheapskates, follow me on Twitter at Michael Packer. Today's question from YouTube from Luis Gonzalez. Hey, Mr. Pack. With Overwatch League currently in its third season, live in arenas, and with each team representing a real city, could it be the first esports that have become as big as some traditional sports leagues? Is it lucrative? Esports have a window here because they're the only live sport in town during quarantine. Are publishers and teams taking advantage of it? The answer to all that is no. Um, first of all, we can't really have arenas. We can show things online. And so, um, sure, esports online. But we're getting soccer games online. This league is back. Uh, Korean baseball is back. The Major League Baseball is talking about it. It's just logistically hard for Major League Baseball, but I think it will happen. I am pretty confident we'll have an NFL season and the players just get tested regularly and they'll play in empty arenas. So we're going to have sports. Uh, I think the the real question on esports is who watches them? And the answer is people who play the game. So if you if you play Overwatch, of course you can watch Overwatch. And, you know, if you're a tank, then you know what the tanks do. If you're a sniper, you know what the snipers do. But, you know, if you don't watch it, you have no idea what a healer is doing in there, why the tank's moving so slow, you know, why everybody else is jumping around. Um, I mean, I could pick other games. Dota, incomprehensible if you haven't played it. And even if you have played it, it's too fast to watch. Um, uh, League of Legends, pretty close to incomprehensible if you haven't played it. I mean, again, the announcers help and they tell you what's going on, but you got to watch a long time. Now, to compare and contrast that with uh, team sports or any sport that involves a ball, golf, okay, I'm here, I'm hitting the ball down there and there's a flag for the target. And then when I get close, the flag pole is in the hole I'm trying to put the ball in. Basketball? They're pushing the ball in the air through the hoop. I get it. It's two points. Uh, football, you're trying to cross the goal line. The other guys are trying to stop you. Baseball is a little more complicated. I mean, I get it. But but most sports, soccer, like it's easy. It takes you about 10 minutes watching soccer and you know what they're doing. You may not know every rule, but you know what they're doing. Overwatch, not so much. So the people who watch Overwatch play Overwatch. I'd say the people who watch golf play golf. And if you don't play golf and you hear the announcer go, 134-yard approach shot, he pulls out a wedge, you don't know what that means at all, right? Um, and unless you play, then you do. And if you don't play, you don't actually appreciate how hard it is to hit a wedge 134 yards with accuracy. And you don't appreciate they put backspin on the ball. Like, it's hard to do, but you don't get it. So when you ask, can they be as big as traditional sports, they can be as big as their audience. And if 30 million people play Overwatch, then the maximum audience for Overwatch is 30 million people. If you get a game that a billion people play like soccer, then you can get an audience of a billion people. And if it's a game like soccer that's easy to follow and understand, you can get 2 billion people because a billion people didn't play, but their kid did or their brother did. You know, they understand it. So, you know, I, I don't think we yet have a game that is that approachable and understandable. And I'd say of all the esports leagues I've seen, all the games I've seen, Counter Strike Go is about the closest. Like, you get the point. Every, you know, the terrorists are trying to kill the anti-terrorists, but the bad guys are trying to kill the good guys. Your blue is trying to kill red. You can watch on the map and you see the dots and you kind of get it and you do the first person view and you see what he sees and you see why they're trying to kill him and he's trying to kill them. You get it when it's down to two versus one. I mean, you know what's going on. So I'd say that most esports are like golf or women's basketball or swimming where they have very loyal audiences who understand what's going on 
but they don't have mass appeal. They don't yet appeal to a billion people. And I think when we get a game that, a, a video game that is like soccer or like NFL football, where we just kind of grow up culturally and everybody watches it, you watch it with your dad, they'll become more popular. So give esports a generation where current people watching esports grow up, have children, and they watch those same games with their kids, and I think they become that popular. But I think it's a generation away from being that popular, with the exception of somebody developing a game that is intuitive, everybody understands it, you totally get what you're watching, and you want to watch people play it. And I don't think that game has been invented yet. I don't think it exists yet. Um, there's going to be a developer who figures this out and he's going to be a billionaire. I mean, there's going to be a, uh, a guy or a girl who comes up with a great game concept and says, I'm building this game bottom up, bottom up for the viewer. And when they do that, that's when we're going to have esports that have audiences bigger than regular sports. And it's going to take a while. So I'd say somewhere between five years and a generation five and 20 to happen. It's going to happen, but not with any of the games that I see out there right now. Uh, to our patrons, thank you for supporting us. To our Twitch Prime members who bothered to link to Amazon, thank you again for the support. And to the rest of you, it's at Michael Pachter on Twitter.